and, and then that problem was compounded by questionable modelling, wasn't it? Oh, thank you for bringing me to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just I'll just finish off. I want to Please, say yeah. that, that virtually everything, and and I've looked carefully at these so-called scary outbreaks that we've had, like Ebola. I think if you look into all these things, it's r remarkable. Like like Wuhan, they could well have all originated from people working on these things in laboratories uh, with very loose containment. And my co-editor, uh, Paul Goddard, has written at great length about the history of lab leaks to the point where why would you consider anything else? So I've, I've really changed my mind. And I would like to see the WHO disbanded. I think it's at the stage where not only has it outlived its usefulness, but it's actually going to cause more harm than good. It's part of a power complex that wants to control you. And I think all this is looking remarkably like walking into uh, 1984 on animal farms, as I mentioned again before. Now, I'm so glad you brought up modelling, because mm -hmm. modelling is, I mean, it is the elephant in the room, or the devil in the room, as I would call it. Without the modelling, we wouldn't be in this state we were. Yeah. You know, step forward, Neil Ferguson, uh, <laughs> possibly the worst predictor of the future uh, ever he should have a, an anti step, step back preferably but yes yeah. Yeah, like an anti nostradamus prize or whatever it is <laughs> I mean, he really yeah. unbelievably overwhelmingly incompetent and i'm very happy to point that out because i haven't seen anything that he predicted that came true i mean the, the last flu thing they predicted hundreds of thousands and there was something like 80 people i mean it's unbelievably uh, out by logs and logs why is that because they use useless modeling now, how can somebody this useless still be so dominant and, and uh, the government listen to him in spite of this? I'm sure, I mean, I've been right all the time and still no one listens to me, but he's wrong all the time and they lap up everything he says. So you can see the source of, of, of my uh, gross yeah. frustration. Yeah. But Neil Ferguson at Imperial College, his enormous big operation he's got there, has just been given another five-year grant to continue this speculative madness. Who did he get the grant from? Bill Gates. So the Gates Foundation have funded him. They are funding these modelers because they're always on hand to present the worst-case scenario for the latest predicted pandemic. And let us not forget, you know, Bill Gates predicted the last pandemic unbelievably accurately. Uh, it, it was far too accurate for it to be by chance. First of all, I thought anybody could predict something's going to happen. But the details are far too accurate, uh, uh, what Gates did with the predictions. And the modelling... Uh, all this modelling, which is so inaccurate, which has been applied to the, uh, the recent COVID crisis... We now know that the SAGE only allowed the worst case scenarios to go to the government on the grounds if they did sensible scenarios, the government wouldn't react on it. And we now know that SAGE and all these other advisers, and in my book, not one of them was suitable to be on that committee from a point of view of doing the respiratory agency. A lot of people were there to work their way up as part of the... Uh, you know, their, their career development, all this thing, stay within the circle. Don't stand out, don't speak out, this, that, and the other. It's that, it's that sort of environment. And I, I really feel that they should have uh, stood out, spoken out. I mean, the people who should have been on that were somebody who I know you're going to uh, uh, interview in the near future, people like David Grimes. And lots of my uh, sensible clinical colleagues, like Carol Sikora, uh, who is also is, is one of the few other clinicians to really speak out about the, the harm and the dreadfulness of lockdown. And we now know that you know, a lot of us were saying, and I did this to my friends, if you've got a respiratory disease and you don't know where it's come from, you don't follow the chief medical officer's advice to do nothing, don't touch anything, because it might do more harm than good. You do what I would call the bleeding office. You, you do what you do, you gargle with aspirin. You, 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 you take lots of vitamin D. All the things that we've known are very good for it. These were kind of negated. But it's worse than that, because there's now very good evidence 
than that hydroxychloroquine, and in particular, ivermectin, are incredibly effective. I mean, there's another book by Pierre Corey, who I recently met over here. Uh, Great guy, yeah. And it is the fact that he too was science shafted everything. In fact, anybody who said anything sensible, Peter McCullough's another one of my heroes. I think he's absolutely fantastic speaking out. Uh, yep. Ryan Coyle, Cole, they've all been Ryan, yeah. completely uh, crushed. And when you look at the evidence, which I thought was what science was, as far as I'm concerned, they're all completely right because they're all presenting hard line evidence. And I've already known how they work. Um, because when I pointed out that all we needed to do was supplement the uh, uh, people with vitamin D in the first instance, right at the beginning, Chris Whitty said the evidence wasn't good enough. Now, this is not science. This is what I was getting at with the, the, the religious um, power play, which is then political religious power play, telling how it is. And that's how they've assessed all the science. They've assessed the science to feed their preconceived political notions that vitamin D is not good. We know that Fauci took vitamin D throughout all this while degrading it. We now know in my research... 6,000 units a day, I think he took from memory. Yeah, I, I don't know the I know dose, and if he told me, I wouldn't believe him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, what I, but what I do, I don't believe anything Fauci says. I mean, he's it, it, unbelievable. I mean, and I've, I mentioned it, I mentioned in the book that, you know, I've known him for years and, and marveled at his ability to make one original discovery. Every meeting, every three month, six month meeting, he had made some amazing, brand new, unique thing that only he had made. And then we were to find out that it had been pre-confirmed by several other laboratories in the years before. I mean, so I just don't trust him at all and how he's managed to build up this, uh, what he's done. So uh, um, back to you, I've forgotten where I was going now. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the issue is why on earth, why on earth would you not want to optimise the immune system? It's, it, 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 the, the vitamin D, the vitamin C, the vitamin A, the sleep, the exercise, the nutrition, the microbiome. And, and, yeah, say, and, and, and what I would like to see is, is, is very large scale trial, trials on your uh, my, mycobacteria vacai uh, vaccine. So, 